Greetings everyone, I'm Adam Harriton. Welcome to the woods of Pennsylvania. It's a beautiful winter morning and in this video I want to show you something special. It's a tree, but it's not just any tree, it's a big tree. Now as you can tell by looking around, most of the canopy species in this area are relatively young. So this isn't a very mature forest. I would say most of the canopy species around here are 50 years old, maybe up to 75 years old. But the big tree that I want to show you is probably at least twice that age. So I was in this area two years ago and I was walking around, I got off the trail, walked up that hillside, and I just stumbled upon this big tree. And not only was it a big tree, it was a big tree of that particular species. And two years ago when I found that tree, that was the biggest tree of that species that I had ever seen. And even today, it's still the biggest tree of that particular species that I've ever seen. So I was walking around two years ago, I found it. That was in the summertime. I came back last year to find it, and I just couldn't find it for some reason. So I came back two days ago, and I found it instantly, but the conditions weren't appropriate for filming. So I came back today, two days later, to find that tree. I think we'll find it, and I'm excited to show it to you and see if you recognize it. So let's go find the tree and see if you could put a name on it. Okay, so what do you think? This is a pretty big tree. Now, this is not an oak. If this tree was an oak, I probably wouldn't film a separate video on it and get really excited that I found an oak of this size because in these woods, it wouldn't be uncommon to find a few oaks that are this size, but this is not an oak, which makes this a pretty special find. So what are your thoughts whenever you see this tree? Do you have any ideas? Now, when you see this smaller tree right here, that's not the same species. So don't look at the bark of this smaller tree and think that's the same species. It's completely different. But they grow in similar habitats, obviously, because you're seeing them grow together. But this slope that I'm on is considered to be a mesic slope. And this is a southwest, south-facing slope. Other trees around here include sugar maple, there's northern red oak, there's white oak, there's pignut hickory, there's shagbark hickory, there's red maple, and other trees that like to grow in mesic woods. Now when you look at the bark of this tree, because that's pretty much what you're going off of right now, the bark, there are some chocolate brown sections of this bark, and you really see it when you peel a piece of the bark off. When you peel a piece of the outermost layer off, you see that it's chocolate brown underneath. That's very unique. Another unique thing about the bark of this tree is that it's soft. So if I take my fingernail and I start pressing in here, it's quite soft and malleable. Not all trees have that feature. If I go into an oak or a hickory and I take my fingernail, I might break my fingernail trying to push into the bark, but this is quite soft right here. Now the canopy is way up there, so unfortunately we can't really see what the buds look like without maybe a zoom lens or binoculars, but we're not gonna look at the buds right now. We're gonna look at clues that might be around the forest floor. So what do the leaves of this tree look like? Well, I know what the leaves look like. So I'm gonna pick up a leaf and it's right under here. This is the leaf of the tree right here. And there are no teeth on this leaf. There are no lobes either. It's a very round oval shape. And at the tip of some of these leaves, this one's ripped off, but if this was an ideal leaf, you would see that it would taper to a point. And the scientific name for that is acuminate. And that's important to know because it might tell us something about the species of this tree. So this is the leaf right here. And there is another clue around here. And the other clue would be the discarded fruits of this tree that persist underneath the tree for years and years and years before they decompose fully. And I can see them right here. And when I show you what they look like, you might be able to get the positive ID of this tree. So there are these little black cone-like structures. There's nothing else in them right now. Typically they should have some colored seeds in the fall, but by now the animals have eaten them. So we're just left with these black cone-like structures. Now, are there any other clues that we can look at with our eyes to help us put a name on this tree? Well, probably, but we're gonna stop right now with the visual clues. I'll give you a few more hints. This tree belongs to a family that is largely pollinated by beetles. This tree mostly grows in the Appalachian region in Eastern North America. It does grow in Canada, it grows in Southern Ontario, but it is listed as endangered in Canada. So which tree is this? Well, I'm wondering if you thought that this tree was tulip tree or tulip poplar. If you thought that, you're pretty close, but it's not a tulip tree. 
So you're pretty close because tulip tree and this tree belong to the same family, but the genus is different. So tulip tree belongs to the Liriodendron genus. That's in the same family as this tree right here, but this tree is in a different genus. And when I tell you the genus, you're gonna know which tree this is. So this tree belongs to the Magnolia genus. And the Magnolia genus and the Liriodendron genus, they both belong to the Magnoliaceae family. So this tree is Cucumber Magnolia, or the cucumber tree. Some people refer to these as cukes. And the scientific binomial is Magnolia acuminata. Now, cucumber tree can live to be 200 to 300 years old, and sometimes they can grow to be over 400 years old. Now, I don't know exactly how old this tree is, but I would put it conservatively between 100 to 150 years old. And if it is between 100 and 150 years old, that would mean that it's probably twice the age of most of the canopy trees down there. Now, I don't know why this tree was spared. I don't know why it's still alive and it wasn't cut down, but I do see some bigger trees growing almost in a line here. So maybe this was some kind of boundary a long time ago, but this is definitely the biggest tree that's growing on this boundary line. Now, this tree is probably 80, to 90 feet tall. It's not incredibly tall. Cucumber trees can grow to be over 100 feet tall, but a 100 foot magnolia would be a pretty tall tree. Now what's interesting about this tree is most of the big branches are pointing that way. And do you have any idea why they're pointing this way? Well, they're pointing this way because this is a south or southwest facing slope. So that's where those branches are receiving the most sunlight. And there's actually not a lot of big branches pointing that way in the north section. But what's interesting is that there was a big opening over here. So this tree is actually receiving a lot of light right now on that side as well. And I wouldn't be surprised if over time, this tree starts to orient more that way as well to balance out what's going on over there. Now, this tree over here, what's that? So I said that that's a different species and it is a different species. I wasn't lying to you. And you could tell that it looks different. And this tree over here, that's the same species. So the leaves are around here. Let me see if I can find a leaf. There's one right here. What tree is that? So that's a sugar maple, Acesaccharum. And sugar maple and cucumber trees, they like to grow together. They grow in mesic woods. Sugar maple is way more common in these woods. Cucumber magnolia is here. It's definitely not abundant. It's rarely abundant in a given habitat. I never really see it taking over a particular area but I see it scattered about. So I hope you enjoyed this little exercise that I took you through today, trying to identify this big tree. This is the biggest cucumber tree I've ever seen. Now I'm not saying it's the biggest cucumber tree you've ever seen. I know that there are trees that grow much bigger, especially in open settings. So if this tree was growing in a cemetery or in someone's yard and it was never cut down, these trees can grow to be quite massive, both in girth and sometimes in height, you know, 100 to 120 feet tall but this tree is growing in a forest. Now the forest was probably cleared and this tree had some room to grow, but the forest is growing around it. So this tree does have some competition right now. So it's probably not going to reach the full potential that it would in a cemetery or in someone's front yard. But you have to admit, this tree is pretty impressive, especially when you take a look around and see the sizes of some of these other trees. So biggest cucumber tree I've ever seen. I encourage you to get out there and look for cucumber trees or other big trees that are out there. Because it's truly remarkable when you come across a specimen, a being, an organism, a wild thing of this size and of this age. Thank you so much for watching this video. I truly appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. If you enjoyed the video and you're not subscribed to the Learn Your Land YouTube channel, I encourage you to do that. And I also encourage you to head on over to learnyourland.com and sign up for the email newsletter so that we can stay in touch. Thank you again for watching. I will see you on the next video.